Good morning. Does that work? Good morning. Welcome. This is an absolutely fantastic day, and I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us on this just incredible experience of rededicating the garden. My name is Pat Elder. I am the manager for Central East, which the Japanese garden happens to be in. And I have been associated, can't hear? How's that, is that much better? Thank you. Been associated with this garden almost from the very beginning when I was a student at the University of Washington watching it being constructed. And later coming on board with the city of Seattle as a horticulturist with this garden had been involved seeing this garden at that time when it was transferred from the University of Washington to the Department of Parks and Recreation. There are many of you that have been here that have done tremendous things for this garden that help it to be what it absolutely is today and is again a great opportunity for us to be able to come and to thank you. The first person that I have on the podium to come before you with remarks is a superintendent of Parks and Recreation and that's Mr. Ken Bounds. Ken has been our superintendent and he'll tell you exactly how many years. He's been one of the most fantastic individuals to work with, has a great heart for this garden, and again, is a true friend of the Japanese garden. If you will hear, help me welcome Mr. Ken Bounds. Thank you, Pat. What a wonderful uh, time to be here again. I remember being here a few years ago for the, uh, the uh, moon showing, and what a wonderful event to be here in this special spot. We have a lot of wonderful parks in the Seattle Park system and we have a handful of jewels that are truly special to not only the citizens of the city of Seattle but to the many many thousands of visitors who have have come to Seattle over the years and have taken the time to come and visit the Japanese Garden. This is one of those jewels. It is a very special place I think in the hearts and minds of the citizens of Seattle and of citizens around the world that come and visit our city. I would like to welcome each and every one of you on behalf of the Seattle Parks and Recreation Department and the City of Seattle to one of the jewels of the park system, the Japanese Garden in Washington Park. I would like to especially welcome the Honorable Council General of Japan, Fumiko Saika, and the Reverend Koichi Barish. Reverend, and the Reverend is the is the guy in the white uh, suit there. Can't pick him out. Uh, and we're here to celebrate the completion of a project that have with our successful partners, the Japanese Garden Community, and some other city agencies, the Seattle Public Utilities, the Office of Sustainability and Environment, and and our agency, the Parks Department. It's been a great partnership. We're also here to bless this project in a traditional Japanese way with the Shinto blessing later this morning. You will notice some areas within the garden that aren't quite finished. Uh, we'll finish those next month. Uh, this is a, was really a unique project and one of great interest, I think, of our staff in, in, uh, in working on it. We don't have any other Japanese garden quite like this in the city, as you know. Uh, and it, it takes a, a certain kind of care and expertise to really make this work. Uh, we had five goals when we began this project. One was to renovate the pond shoreline through the installation of new granite rocks in the eroded areas. And I think those of you who are frequent uh, visitors to the garden will notice uh, the uh, placement of the rocks. And, and if you recall, uh, not that long ago before this project, it, it, looked, it looked as if the bank the banks were receding to the boulevard and that in fact was the case and we had to stop that erosion and really recreate a, a, a pond that uh, could function. Tons of boulders were lifted into the garden with a crane. Uh, the boulders were placed with the thoughtful oversight of our Japanese garden rock specialist Hoichi Karusi who came all the way from Florida to help us in this, uh, this project. Our second goal was to reduce future erosion by stabilizing the pond water level. Uh, we have done that, although I understand we had a, a slight problem yesterday, so the pond, pond water level will be a little bit higher, be as high as those uh, pinks, the, the stakes out there with the pink ribbon. So when the project is fully completed, uh, that will be the level of the pond. Uh, we will, the third objective was to significantly reduce the amount of water used. 
this was especially uh, concerned to us last year when we went through uh, a fairly serious drought and we recognized that there was a significant amount of water being used uh, through the, uh, the pond here and that was creating some issues uh, in the rest of the creek system. Uh, we also wanted to treat the pond water to enhance the habitat for the koi. Uh, the koi will return to the pond when the pond water warms up a little bit and provides for a much better uh, uh, environment for them. And the fifth objective was to repair the earthen bridge which had rotting wood members. The earthen uh, surface still has a little bit of time to cure with some warmer weather and some drier weather. So I'm pleased to say this morning that uh, upon the completion of the project next month, we will have successfully achieved all five of these goals. And we wouldn't have done it without the uh, wonderful team members uh, that really led this effort. And I'd like to, uh, to recognize Koichi Kobayashi, landscape architect who designed the shoreline restoration. Is Koichi here? Here, raise your hand, Koichi. Let's give him a hand. There he is. Okay, thank you, Koichi. Uh, Ted Miranda of TAM, who designed the water recirculation pump system. Is Ted here? And any other members of the TAM team? Let's give him a hand anyway if we don't see him. It's all right. Ira Dennison, the construction project manager of Iliad, is Ira? Way back, Way back Ira. Great. Good job, guys. And obviously, a huge uh, thank you to our very own uh, senior gardener, Jim Thomas, for his day-to-day -day dedication and commitment to the garden, especially during the construction period. We all know what it's like to live through construction. If you, uh, you, you know, if your house is being remodeled or if you're doing a land landscape project in your garden, you know that during that process, uh, it's a struggle. It looks a lot worse uh, during the process than one can imagine. And when you have the love and passion for the garden like Jim does, and the commitment and the, and the knowledge to be able to live through that and then make it uh, turn out the way it, the way it has, it's, uh, it takes really, really great dedication. We also had many other park staff people that I'd like to recognize, our project manager, Laura Scharf, who isn't here, but others who've been involved uh, with the project Pat and others, so let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Ken has a big job, but the next person that I'm going to introduce also has an extremely large job, and that's because her territory is to serve Washington, Northern Idaho, and Montana, and that is the Honorable Council General Fumiko Saiga. Please come and give us some remarks, if you will, Council General. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm very, very happy to be here today um, to see this uh, renovated Japanese garden. Um, I was here last year to see the, some of the pine trees look like you're growing out of pond and that today it looks so neat and nice and this Japanese garden in Seattle is one of the best Japanese garden outside of Japan and that we are very very proud and uh, also proud even to be sh to, to show to the Japanese tourists uh, they feel very relaxed and and uh, uh, they're very comfortable in this garden I'm very grateful for all the work that has been done and also the great uh, effort and, uh, by the Japanese Garden Society. I'm very happy to see the new Japanese garden. I'm looking forward to more green uh, season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Council General. In this garden, there are a variety of things, and of course, one of them that you know is design that needs to constantly happen to make sure that we are keeping within the original intent, but at the same time making modifications that come through. We are very pleased to have as chair of the 
um, the Japanese Garden Advisory Council president, is also the chair of the Department of Landscape Architecture at the University of Washington. This gentleman who's next coming to address, to speak with you, is one that we feel particularly privileged to have working for this garden. The contribution that he made has been tremendous. If you will help me welcome Mr. Ian Roberts. Thank you so much. Uh, this garden is full of surprises and one of the biggest ones right now is that I'm up here speaking to you. I had not intended to be here, but uh, I would like to add my congratulations to all of those who worked very hard to bring this project to fruition. Uh, sometimes we don't notice the underpinnings of a, a successful garden and the underpinnings of the rocks in this pond is something that has taken people a long time to figure out how to do this really well to make it work for the long term and I congratulate again the contractors the parks department and the gardener Jim Thomas for uh, their work uh, bring the project to such a successful conclusion uh, we are an advisory group that assists the park department in uh, looking after the garden and I'd like the other members of the advisory group who are here today to raise their hand or stand up. I see Elizabeth Moses, uh, Anita Mattis, oh, uh, Richard Polkerbeck, uh, any others? Oh, Ed, Ed Widmeyer. Uh, thanks to them also for their contributions to the garden in supporting it. And thank you all for coming, and I look forward to the blessing. The remainder of the program has to do with some additional thank yous, and then we'll take about a five-minute break for those of you that cannot stay for the blessing. But for those of you that can, this is an opportunity that you will be able to see something that you would have to otherwise typically go to Japan. So I'm hoping that you will be able to understay and really enjoy that part of that. The other individuals I'd like to recognize today are Mr. Herbie White, who is the director of the Central Division. Uh, Herbie, if you can wave, he's back there. The, the information, the media information on the rededication of this wonderful garden has been absolutely phenomenal. And one of the people that helped to do that was Joelle Lagan. And Joelle, if you are here, she's probably out front handing out cookies. She's here. Joelle, thank you again for all that you're doing for the garden. This, as wonderful as this garden is, it's still a well-kept secret to some people in Seattle. And so we want to make sure that the word gets out because there is no place that you can go in this city and spend a half an hour and come out as refreshed as you can in this garden. It has a wonderful effect on everyone that comes in. And for those of you that are here for the first time, we invite you to make sure that you experience all the seasons of the year because it is absolutely magic from one season to the next. Next, um, Laura Shaft was also mentioned. She was a project manager on this and Rich Hennings, they both worked tirelessly and I have received tremendous phone calls whenever there was a problem. We've run into a slight snag, we're going to have to make some modification, but through it all they were there to the very from the very beginning until we're doing the dedication. They worked very much with Koichi and his name has also been mentioned, but working with Koichi I have developed a great, uh, we taught at the University of Washington together in the Department of Landscape Architecture. And he has just seasoned so absolutely wonderfully and deserves all the credit that he is getting for the design on this. His patience was just uh, unimaginable. So Koichi, I personally want to thank you for your contribution that you've made to this. We have, thank you so much. Gary Cirosis and two other people that uh, went, go beyond and above. These lovely flowers, again, were brought in Elizabeth Moses and Ellen Widmeyer. They are the individuals that you can always count on to bring some joy in your life with either their hard work and dedication to the garden or just absolutely wonderful flowers. And so, ladies, again, thank you so very much for what you do for us. Other staff people, Carol Baker and the Central Division, in terms of their assistance, 
one of the things that you can't see in the pond, which when we removed the water to take out the koi, what they found was sludge. And they came back to remove this dirty, nasty job. But they came through with buckets and hip waders, and a couple of times they got stuck. But through it all, they got it out. And the, once the water's in and it's all settled, you will just have a clear reflection of the pond and the, I should say, the plants reflecting out the koi. You'll be able to see it will be absolutely wonderful. The koi will be reintroduced later in April. Right now, they are, as Ken said, they're on a spa retreat. Uh, but uh, as soon as it's warm enough to bring them back, we will bring them and they will thank you also. I absolutely guarantee it. <laughs> Ed Jackson of the crew, Cy Love, John Catone from the plumbing, Steve Gracie from the electrical shop. These are you know, what we call our artesian. These are the folks behind the scenes that you never see but come out and again do tireless work and constantly are there for us and we want to say we appreciate you and thank you so very much. Harold Yant of Star Koi of Everett who's hosting our Koi. Harold if you're here thank you very much. And finally Seattle Public Utilities, Phil um, Pashke and their partnership for the water and recirculation because a lot of what we got in terms of the funds came from other programs and we want to thank and recognize these individuals also. I think I probably have forgotten some people. I saw um, Ed, let's see, John Candy and Stephanie Jones back there. All of you that are on the Japanese Garden Society, if you're here today, can you raise your hands? Again. These are the angels of the garden. The, our, the Japanese Garden uh, Advisory Council. Several of you are also members, members of that. And my personal angel, the one who just does and keeps me on target, is Michelle Finnegan. And she's probably out handing out cookies. So those of you who have worked with Michelle also know just how absolutely wonderful she is. I want to thank you. And who did I just, is that Michelle back there? <laughs> There's a hand. Okay, and Rich Hennings back there, thank you so very much. Please, again, please, I would like you to be able to stroll through the garden, take a look, but if you need to get back to your offices, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. If you can remain, we'll take about five minutes. The blessing ceremony will start. It is something, particularly those of you that have cameras, that you will not forget. For all of you that have done so much, for that which you have done and that which you are still doing and about to do, we thank you. We never get an opportunity to thank you as much because of all of the things that we're doing, but it is well deserved. For those of you that have not gotten involved yet, we offer you an opportunity and the way out of the garden, there's a couple of slips there that you can leave your name and address. Let us know if you would like more information, if you'd like to join the society, if you would like to be volunteers. We have work parties that are in the garden become a part of us because this garden is yours. It is, I lived in Japan for a year and every time I come in here, it's like visiting Japan again. This belongs to you. We could not have it without you. Thank you for coming here and thank you again for all that you do. I know for many people, this is the first time to see the Shinto ceremony. The nature of this ceremony is we are going to invite the divine being to come and celebrate this great occasion. So it's a kind of a natural way of proceeding. If you were to invite the honored guest to your home, first you would clean things very well, then you would prepare something, a food offering, something to eat, and then you would just speak honorifically to that guest. And that's the same kind of, that's the same kind of procedure we're going to have here. The first part is called the Shubat, which is a simplified purification. Again, it's uh, equivalent to cleaning before inviting the honored guest. Please bow 
Everyone, please bow slightly. Thank you. is to invite the divine being to inhabit this special area which is called the Himurogi, kind of like antenna for a certain kind of energy. Koshinogi. <coughs> Now is the uncovering of the main elements of food offerings.
Dostey Nojo Sojo Nogi, now is the presentation of Shinto Prayer.
Next is purifying the corners of the garden. Obviously, we won't walk to the complete corner, but we'll purify the four directions. Uh, there are some people who are going to help me carry things. Kumeyarai no gi. Ano gutsama. Next is the offering of the Tabagushi. So since we have invited the other guests, and now we've spoken on horrifically, and now we've again purified the corners, the next thing to do is to make a special gift. In this case, we'll offer the Tabagushi, which is the sacred branch of evergreen, with a special shide, it's a kind of a, kind of a paper that is a, like an antenna for divine energy. So first is a Saishu, I will offer Tamaguchi, and then all the people who are mentioned in the Norito, please offer Tamaguchi, everyone knows who you can buy this as you tell me what you Let me just have the other people mentioned in the noise show. Please come forward.
part of what our designer did was to research the original blueprints, talk to the few living members of the design team in Japan, and try to get back to the original design intent in the, in the pond area of the garden. In doing so, he discovered that there were about eight large rock outcroppings that were not installed originally due to lack of time and funds. And uh, he included those in the design and they have been installed. So the garden now, the pond, is, is actually closer to the original pond that Juki Ida had designed. This area is the, uh, it's the, the best vista of the garden. You're high on the elevation of the North Hill and you're looking south and you your sight line is actually through the garden. Uh, there is a pine tree that you can see in the middle of this, this area that's actually out in the parking lot. So this gives you an idea of how much depth of vision you have through the garden. Uh, the material in the garden is pruned so that the core of the garden is kept dwarfed or miniaturized in order to accentuate the feeling of the valley that we're setting in. So the middle part of the garden is kept lower. The perimeter trees are allowed to grow taller just to accentuate that feeling. The style of gardening fits my nature. It's, um, it's rather low key, very intense, but low key. Um, it's not about the gardener, it's about the garden. So it's, it's fun to show that off. And it shows off my skills, but in a, in a very um, humble way, I would say. Yeah. <laughs>